Hello everyone and welcome to this video which is in our great engine game series and our crazy Leela series. I'm Grandmaster Matthew Sadler and we're taking another look at a Leela Night Odds game. Um, Mr. Beads keeps on claiming that uh, one of the advantages of not having a knight is that white's development is quicker. And uh, well that's, uh, that's kind of true. Um, I mean, I wonder how much difference that actually makes. You know, it's a, it's a tempo of development, but you're a night down somehow. But, uh, well, this game is uh, quite a good example of at least how it can put pressure on a human opponent. Because the fact that white doesn't have a knight on g1 means that white can castle quickly and get an f4 very quickly, which sort of speeds up the, uh, the good old Vienna an awful lot. So let's have a look how that goes. So, um... E4, E5, Bishop C4, Bishop C5, castles already. We're already castled and we're already thinking about playing the move F4, which would take it back into some sort of Vienna declined King's Gambit type of uh, situation. Knight F6, Knight C3. And uh, black plays rather cautiously here with uh, A6. Uh, black's strong uh, Lee chess player. Um, see a rating of uh, 2560 here. So, um, and I think that uh, that, that was, um, yeah, I think that it was higher in uh, in other forms of, uh, of blitz. So, uh, yeah, black's a very strong player. But what black's doing is just playing quite cautiously, really. Uh, making sure that the bishop doesn't get uh, exchanged with knight a4, which Leela's been doing just to net the bishop pair. And also making sure that white doesn't play bishop g5. So uh, it's just a question of, you know, black's just trying to, uh, I'm a piece up, keep you at bay, no problem. Fairly sensible way of doing things, but somehow Leela manages to create play even then. So uh, king h1 played, d6, and now f4. And well, you can see how quickly White um, managed to get f4 in. I mean, sometimes, you know, it can happen on the second move with the King's Gambit or on the third move with a Vienna, but normally as a sacrifice and, uh, and uh, you know, Black's able to strike back in the center or whatever. I mean, here you're, you're playing f4 being, you know, almost fully developed somehow. So, um, yeah, I mean, uh, definitely the, uh, the missing knight is uh, speeding up White's, um, White's play here. Um, now the engines, um, what are the engines looking at here? They're quite keen on playing bishop e6 as soon as possible. Actually, what the engines are trying to do is to not commit the king to the uh, to the king side, but just trying to play moves like bishop e6, try and exchange off some pieces, even at the cost of um, of um, uh, some uh, yeah weaknesses in the pawn structure or whatever. Um, what Black did was play e takes f4, and um, Leela replied with uh, d4 here. Um, now, that doesn't actually alter the, um, the evaluation at all. I do wonder whether, uh, you know, for a human player, that was a slight shock and a slight... Oh, curses. I've, uh, I've allowed that somehow. Um, certainly how it, you know, how I felt when I saw it in the game. You know, you're sort of thinking, oh, my goodness, you know, uh, I had expected that, uh, that White could gain a tempo like that. Um, mustn't be underestimated uh, how uh, important those sort of things are because um, you know for engines they're still saying you know plus 3.9 or whatever they they don't really care but yeah humans get affected by these uh, knocks somehow and Lila's really good at uh, at um, giving doubt and uh, and annoyance and grief to uh, to human players. Um, Bishop b4 little bit of a funny move in a way um because this bishop's quite loose on um on b4 and you know once this knight moves away it's not going to have very much to do uh the engine's preferring bishop a7 or bishop b6 really you know followed by playing bishop e6 and uh you know th there was sort of feeling that this was a better way of playing um and yeah i mean i agree i mean it's it's never the end with leela right i mean uh, um it's not like you've got one move that just kills it leela's just going to keep Keep on finding uh, ways to create play whatever but this seemed like you know a, a more sensible way of, of putting the pieces bishop b4 you just know that the bishop's going to get hit at some stage and it's not going to do a great deal so knight d5 knight takes and now bishop takes d5 um, actually all the other engines wanted to play e takes d5 which isn't silly. I mean, the, the bishop will be able to come back to d3 and uh, attack h7, you know, so, um, you know, together with the queen and the bishop coming to f4 and all that. So, I mean, that that is uh, quite sensible. 
but Leela played uh, bishop takes d5. The one interesting thing about it, as always, you know, I've mentioned this a number of times, is that Leela is not really worrying that much about exchanging one extra um, uh, minor piece. You know, it's, um, um, you know, Leela's um, uh, you know, often quite happy to do that. Two minor pieces, Leela's a little bit dubious, but one minor piece, not. Worth pointing out uh, um, um, the tricks that, you know, Leela can find in, uh, in these positions. Um, for example, if you were to play bishop e6 as black here, I mean, obviously b7 is hanging, but there's also uh, this trick as well of playing the move uh, c3. And um, after uh, bishop a5, we've got queen h5 check, and then we're going to win the bishop on, um, on uh, a5. It's just to, to show really that, um, you know, there is so much going on behind the, uh, the scenes here, you know, little tactics being spotted that, um, uh, that, you know, we're kind of unaware of. But, you know, it's all happening to make it kind of uh, um, very hard for black to, uh, to get free. And um, but again, you know, it's it's my objection to moves like to somewhat loose moves like Bishop B4, leaving pieces uh, hanging like this is, I think, not a very good idea for uh, for uh, black players against Leela unless you've really got a good concrete idea. And as I said, you know, Bishop B4, maybe the idea was all will force black to force Leela to exchange off a piece. But I don't think Leela's worrying about that, um, uh, you know, normally. So c6 played, bishop b3, and now d5. And the engines are uh, pretty much uh, agreeing with um, with that, just uh, trying to block out the bishop on b3. Bishop takes f4 played, and now castle kingside. Now, this is not a move that the engines want to play. They still consider it to be minus 2.61, but you start looking at the variations that they're coming up with, and you start saying, ooh, ooh, I'm not sure, uh, I'm not sure uh, that, uh, that I particularly want to be playing that. Um, the engines, again, you know, being quite conservative there, looking for, for bishop e6, first of all, looking for some, uh, some more development before actually committing the king to the, uh, to the king side. Um, because what's the problem after castles is that Leela plays queen h5 and then straight away now we're looking for bishop takes h6 sacrifices and uh, I mean you don't know how dangerous they are but obviously you know um, even with plenty of time they're worrying and uh, with not very much time they're incredibly worrying. I mean this is really you know <laughs> this is how I play my blitz all the time right I'm just unbelievably aggressive and just trying to sack stuff all the time and um, you know it doesn't work all the time uh, but uh, not by any means but um, but uh, yeah it is always tricky to deal with you know and uh, and uh, yeah you know for a human player very very difficult. So what were the engines looking at? The engines were actually looking at something which I don't think I'd ever come up with. Um, it was the move queen d7. So you're looking to play the move queen g4. And after h3, playing f5 in this position with the idea of being able to bring the queen over to f7. That's quite, yeah, that's quite tricky. I wouldn't be spotting that somehow. And yeah, to be honest, I mean, also even with it, you know, uh, I, I'm still feeling that, um, that white's going to have plenty of uh, opportunities to create some danger here. Um, Black played the move bishop e6, which is uh, sensible, but now Leela played bishop h6. <laughs> and I mean, the, you know, the funny thing is, is that the engines are still assessing this as minus 2.46. So, yeah, you know, it's not like, um, you know, <clears throat> this is winning and it's finished. But yeah, I mean, Leela is just upping the danger, upping the um, the percentage chances of finding of having a win here, you know, and uh, for humans really difficult to deal with. Now, the, the interesting thing is that the engines say you should just ignore this. You should play a move like rook e8 or you should play a move like knight d7. Just ignore it, get the piece and pieces towards the defense of the king and you should be able to survive it. For example, knight d7 takes takes, rook f3 and then rook e8. Rook f1, knight f8, and you should be dealing with it. These attack, these sacrifices on f7 are apparently not dangerous, but okay, you know, can you imagine uh, trying to hold, uh, you know, this sort of position against uh, an engine? We've got rook f6 coming in, rook g3s, we can play, uh, the, bring the bishop in there, you know, I mean, I, I'm not sure I'm defending this against a human opponent, maybe even with much more time, so I mean, you know, uh, it's it's pretty horrible already. I mean, basically, you should not be getting into this situation against Leela. G takes h6 played. Queen takes h6. 0.38 now. So Leela's already slightly better. 
So, you know, I mean, uh, and uh, the challenges are, are still there to come. You might want to uh, stop the video here now and uh, just think, you know, what is the only way for black to keep uh, the balance approximately? Definitely a, a very good defensive test. Well, the solution is uh, given by Stockfish, which is uh, uh, Bishop D2, Stockfish and Torch. Uh, Bishop D2, um, just giving out back a piece to chase the queen away and then play King G7. And then you can play the rook round to h8. Actually, the rook h8 to h6 is what the uh, engines want, so that you might even be able to, to uh, shogi style, actually, to uh, to hide a king in the corner behind something defending. But, I mean, you know, white's got, got great compensation, eh? full compensation for the piece and a little bit more. But that's the way to do it. And once again, you know, you're seeing that, uh, you know, how engines are just willing to give back material, that the human players are... Yeah, reluctant. Eh? I mean, it's just very hard for us to judge, you know, do we need to, to hit the absolute panic button now and just, um, you know, try and uh, give back material to, to, to get some sort of parity? Or should we just be uh, keeping the material and just, um, you know, weathering the storm somehow? But um, in general, I'm, I'm tending to think that, you know, if you see a way of doing the first, go for it, because um, your chances of weathering storms does not seem to be very good against Leela. So after knight d7, um, actually both Torch and Stockfish think that rook f3 is 2.13. Think this is actually um, just um, completely winning. Um, but um, um, e takes d5, still very good. Um, but after c takes d5, um, Leela played the move c4, which is really interesting. Threatening to play bishop c2. Actually, uh, Torch and Stockfish now think that uh, the position's equal again. Um, they think that rook f3 was the uh, was the best line, eh? and then after bishop g4, we go bishop d5, which is going to be quite dangerous. I guess that bishop f3, gf3 is the idea, followed by uh, rook g1 check. Um, but funnily enough, it seems like Leela, most likely, I haven't checked it in, in great detail, but now if Torch and Stockfish sort of say that, uh, you know, uh, that this is not the best move, then, uh, then uh, they, they are probably right. Uh, because um, uh, bishop d2 is uh, what the engines want. And after queen d2, d takes c4. And I think that, um, yeah, the, you know, black should be uh, kind of able to survive this. Although, you know, I mean, it's still very, very dangerous, right? We've got uh, we've got rooks coming in. Um, it's still very, very dangerous. But uh, queen h4 is the way that they want to start. And then, yeah, maybe try and uh, maybe try and get the king across or play a move like f5 and just kind of weather the storm that way. Um, Black played the move d takes c4 and now it's plus seven. So you never know. I mean, maybe Leela's just uh, was just uh, gambling on uh, on uh, this being most likely. So uh, um, because rook f3 is played now and then, you know, I mean, it's not that you've not only got the rook coming across to g3, you've also now got bishop c2 defending h7. So it's, I mean, it's lovely vision, right, to play this move c4, but maybe not quite the best one. Bishop d6 played to stop rook g3, but we've got bishop c2 now. And, uh, well, queen h7 is, uh, or bishop h7 or whatever is happening. Um, obviously, if you play um, f5, um, then um, I've got um, um, f6, f5. Um, then I've got uh, queen takes e6 check as well. So, you know, that's all completely uh, losing. Actually, uh, queen g6 and rook h3 will be even stronger there. Just notice just now. Um, so black played rook e8, but uh, you might want to uh, give yourself a quick tactical test, pretty typical uh, way of mating here. Well-known pattern, uh, bishop h7 check, king h8, bishop check, queen h7, and rook f7 checkmate takes queen f7 checkmate. So there we are, that was, um, that was uh, Leela coming through in uh, double quick time. Absolutely uh, amazing. But what, what, you know, what I've really noticed was uh, indeed, you know, the um, uh, that um, being one night, uh, one night light there really did accelerate the, um, you know, the uh, uh, the uh, the white standard attack with F4 and you know, being fully developed as well, not with your your king in the center or whatever. Um, so that definitely puts some extra pressure on black. Um, you know, and what you're noticing is, um, you know, as well is, um, you know, again, how quickly the game turns. And I think, you know, th that's the, the biggest takeaway that I've had, you know, from these uh, odds games is that, um, you know, you're really assuming, I'm always really assuming, or always was, that, uh, you know, 
it took a very long while for uh, for the game to change. But the way that Lille is setting up uh, the position with maximum aggressiveness, you know, you're, you're just really seeing, um, you know, within uh, two moves, you're at 0.38 now after G takes H6. And after knight D7, you're completely winning. You know, the game is in two two moves. The game has turned around completely. You know, and uh, but of course, you know, already, you know, there was a, a feeling of danger from Black and a feeling as well that uh, that Black had missed some uh, some possibilities already, you know, which for a human player, of course, you know, psychological effect is huge. So, um, yeah, incredible. Absolutely uh, amazing. And uh, yeah, you know, again, against a very strong uh, Blitz bullet player on Lee Chess, you know, um, you know, actual mate within 24 moves giving night odds, you know, it's absolutely incredible. So there we are. I hope you're enjoying these. I've got some Rook Odds games um, um, ready and prepared and ready to go. And I'm also looking at a black game as well. Uh, Leela's playing very interesting stuff with uh, with black. So I'm, I'll try and find a, a few more of those as well. But uh, yeah, you know, thanks very much for watching. Hope to see you at the next videos. Got plenty more. Also lots of uh, uh, Mariotti still to come. Thanks very much, everyone.